Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave. Happy 2022. You know, these first couple of days of the new year, I like to summarize everything that I did with trading in 2021. So I have my long-term holdings. I've got my options trading. I like to see which one outperformed which. And in 2021, it was the long-term holdings account. And the reason that was, and it's not always that way, is that the options trading account, I had one particular stock, this pesky Alibaba that got me so badly with one particular trade that it cost me a lot of my premium that I collected throughout the year. So I think options are a great way to go. I think you can put a lot of money in your pocket consistently. That's why I have these separate accounts. But you got to have a really good process. The core, the heart of that process is really important. And then when that breaks down, because it will with certain trades, you've got to have a big robust process about how you're going to handle these situations. So I, today I want to talk through that whole robust process, the Alibaba trade and a couple others that I'm in right now, and explain why it's probably okay. We'll see. But if that's what you're interested in, please stick around. Whoop. So the end of the year makes me reflect on the bad trades that I made. I'm sure we all do that, right? The if only situations. Um, so today I figured we'd go through some of those and actually explain some of them that I'm in right now with understanding that with the proper preparation, it's okay. We can be happy with the positions that we're in. Basically rules to live by when it comes to trading options, even the bad ones. So the Alibaba trade, I started selling puts early in 2021 and it was getting put to me over a period of time as the stock was sliding. I was kind of enamored by the stock. I thought it had a lot of upside potential, but as more and more news came out, I collected more and more shares, started to realize I had too much Alibaba and it was kind of breaking one of my rules, having too much in one individual stock. So I pulled the cord there and I sold off the vast majority of it, um, but not until it ate through about 30% of the total premiums I collected for all of 2021. So quite significant. Now I, I'm not a, against Alibaba. I still have a belief that it's going to rebound in 2022. So I did keep a couple hundred shares. I'm not selling calls against it or anything. I'm just going to hold that one long term and see where it goes from there. But that's it. I'm not putting any more into it. No matter how far it drops, I'm not adding to the position. Just gonna see if it's able to come back. I expect that it will. So that's the situation with that one. Now I wanna show you a couple that I'm in right now and I try to understand some of the rules that I'm following going forward. All right, so I'm calling these lost option positions. Basically, you're too far out of the money at this point to generate anything. So you've kind of lost the position. So what do we do? So in this first case here, this is PayPal. And this is a stock that I really like that I actually own in my long-term holding account. I'm probably about an even number right there. And in this case, it's an option in my options account. So back on 1018 of last year, I sold one 1119 $245 put. And that felt pretty good because the stock was at $268. So it had to correct quite a bit. And for that, I collected a $232.48 premium. Got to put that in my pocket right from my sold put. And annualized, that's about a modest 10% annualized return. So if we look at this chart, you can kind of see by that red arrow exactly where this thing was at when I sold it. And then it decided to do cliff diving, like it was, you know, on a Hawaiian vacation or something and went right down the drain. So you can see how far it corrected from that initial price when I bought it and the stock was at $268 a share. So by the time the option was assigned on 11.19 at $245 a share, the stock had plummeted all the way down to about $194 a share. So on assignment day, I was out $5,000, right? So this is a lost option position. I might be able to still generate a little bit by selling the call, but in general, I'm out $5,000 after collecting a couple hundred dollars. So this does happen. This is a real situation. So what do we do? How do we handle it when we've just lost $5,000 and uh, we generated 200 bucks? So maybe we're out about $4,800 overall. So for me, I'm okay with this situation because I'm not gonna become too saturated with PayPal, but to own 100, 200, or 300 shares for me at this price is okay. So what you can see is I'm slowly picking up shares and I even sold a second put at $170 per share. So I sold that second put, I collected a $111. I sold the call. It's not too far away at 250 all the way out to February, I collected $84. So I'm still able to generate a little bit off of this. In the meantime, because I have a long-term belief in PayPal, I'm slowly adding shares. Five, 10, not huge numbers, but it's averaging down my overall price. So right now I'm sitting around a $237 average price. 
So in the long run, I think this is going to be an okay trade for me. But you can see right now, it's kind of a lost option position because it's drifted so far below after that big, big, big drop. So that's how I plan to handle it. And that's why I think it's okay because I don't have that much invested into PayPal and I'm going to limit my exposure to PayPal as an individual stock. I, I typically wouldn't go over like three to 5% of my total account value for my options trading account. So that's my PayPal situation. I simply feel like if I limit the amount of exposure and I stick with stocks that I believe in long-term, that this situation is okay. All right, so this next example starts with, it's all about Micron. And, it, and if you've seen any of my videos on Fidelity options trading, people that are getting started on there often get freaked out by the fact that if you sell a call, it says unlimited loss potential. So hopefully I'm showing that to you right now, but this kind of centers on that and explains it a little bit better visually. So it is a position that I put money in my pocket. I just limited the amount that I put in my pocket. So let's talk through this one a little bit too, because this is a different side of the same coin, but back on 8.5 of 21, I sold two 10.15 expiration, $72.5 puts when the stock was at $81.53. And for that, I collected a premium about 400 bucks, put that in my pocket, got four sushi dinners. So if you look at that on an annualized rate, it's about a 13% return. So we're off and running, right? We put some money in our pocket. If you look at the chart though, and you're going to see, wow, I bought it right at the peak again, all about cliff diving. So I bought it there. And as we progress forward, you're going to see that that option was assigned on 10.15 at that $72.50 strike price. The stock was all the way down to $67.68. So I turn around and do what I typically do. I sold the call, right? Trading the wheel strategy kind of idea. So on 11.12, I sold two $73 calls and collected another $60.97. Didn't get to collect a whole lot because, well, that's pretty close to the, uh, or we're pretty far away from the strike price, right? So I'm sure you understand that by now. But if you have any questions on this stuff, ask down below. Happy to help. Then as the stock started to climb, I got to roll that option out on 11.10 to a 12.3 expiration. And for that, I had to, let's see, I had to, I collected $700.97, but I had to pay $410 about to close it out. So Altogether, I made $291 on that transaction. So again, we're putting money in our pocket. But at this point, the stock is at $74.57. So it's starting to get away from us, reaching escape velocity. Fast forward to 12.3, and you can see we rolled it out again on 12.3 to 12.31 expiration. And for this one, it cost me $1,845 to close it, and, 20, and I collected $2,144. So I made another 300 bucks. Kind of crazy with the stock at $82.19 at that point. So you can see it's getting away from us. We're not gonna be able to keep it, but we're gonna try to maximize our profit and see how we do overall. So all together, I collected that 400, that 60, that 291, $299, I collected four different premiums, and I made $100 on the stock going up in value from where I had it put to me and where it got called away. So all together, I made $1,143. Why am I complaining? Well, you know, I just want you to understand that if I would have just held this after assignment, I would have collected that initial 400 bucks, and now it would be worth $4,258. And overall made about $4,648, which would be four times what I made by trading all these options running around like a crazy person trying to keep this thing. So I still made money, but you can see that this can work on both sides, whether the stock drops through the floor or it takes off. Sometimes options can limit our potential to make a lot of money. So consider that and you know you might want to balance out your portfolio so that you have a little bit working in uh, long-term holdings and with trading options. So the current situation with Micron is it's gone. It's, it's gone. Got called away on Thursday actually. So I don't have any shares of this anymore in my options trading account. I do own a few shares in my long-term holding account and I might even chase this higher because I think it's still a pretty decent value even though it's gone up a considerable amount. So I'll be looking into Micron, maybe trading, selling another put on against it here in the next coming week or two. So as I reflect back on 2021 and what I learned and I can apply in 2022, you know, I wanna make sure that I don't overexpose myself like I did with Alibaba. So I'm gonna limit my exposure to three to 5% on any individual stock in my account. I also wanna make sure that I continue to only trade against stocks that I wanna own long-term. 
I do those two things, I'm off to a pretty good start. I kind of see it as a challenge. You know, I'm going to try to defeat my long-term holdings with my options account. So make sure you do your own research. Make sure you look at companies. And if you're going to trade options against individual stocks, you want to dig deep and understand what you're getting yourself into. So I don't like to trade against crazy, risky tech stocks that some people bring up to me because of the high volatility and the high premiums that they're, they're collecting at times. But I try to stay away from that. Now with Alibaba, I did my research and I felt like that was a good safe place to pay money. I just overexposed myself. So that's my plan for 2022. If you have any questions on any of this, please ask down below. I'll be sure to get back to you. I did reach 1000 subscribers just before the end of 2021. So I got to hit that milestone. Thanks to everyone who liked and subscribed and everything else in 2021. But if you're new and you want to join us in 2022, we'll be talking about everything from real estate to businesses, to options, to stocks, to ETFs. So if you like any of that content, please like and subscribe. Now, really appreciate you watching today. If you have any questions, again, ask down below. We'll see you next time. Take care. Whoop.